Wait, babe, do you see this? Stop. Stop. Oh my God. It's been a long time. Look, it's like spotted. It's almost like a diseased buffalo. Let's go ahead and flip it over and see what we got for a year. Three, two, one. Hello everybody and welcome back to Quinn's Coins, your home for treasure hunting of all kinds. Today I'm joined by my wife Debo and we're going to be hunting through this $100 box of nickels to see who can find the coolest and rarest coins. Whoever wins is going to choose where we get to eat this weekend and the loser has to pay for the meal. Oh it's on. Alright here's our $100 box of nickels. This one's a little bit different. You can see we have all of the rolls showing on the ends. Didn't see anything super crazy. There's some older looking stuff. We're going to be just going in blind here to see what we can find. We're looking for old coins, rare coins, anything interesting that's gonna show up for points on our score sheet. What do you say we dive in and pick our rolls for the box? Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna grab some from the uh, middle here. I'm gonna take these ones. He's cheating! Wait, 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 I want some of those ones from the corner. Those are the good ones. No. <laughs> ah! All right, we got our rolls divided up 25 a piece. Now we're gonna go ahead and go over the rules of today's competition. We will, of course, be using the Quince Coins Nickel Roll Hunting Placemat to aid us in our coin hunt today. As you can see across the front side, we have all the different types of nickels that you can find in your nickel rolls. And then flipping it out and over to the back side, we have the score sheet, which we're gonna use to rate today's boxes to see who can come out on top based off of this point system that we made. Without further ado, let's jump into the hunt. All right, jumping into roll number one. I got my camera going, Debo's got hers going. We just grabbed a random one here. Didn't really see anything on the ends like I mentioned, so we're just kind of going in blind to see what we can find. And oh, I got something already, guys. It's, no, you uh, something's, don't. Something's definitely old looking right here. Let's uh, do a quick it's old zoom. Looking doesn't mean it's old. Okay, but do you see this, babe? No. That thing, that thing is old. No. Let's see what we got for you guys. Three. Oh, I'm already seeing 40. Okay. It, it came out too quick, so there you go, guys. We're starting off with a 1940, really and it has a Denver Mint mark on the back side as well. So nice, interesting find right off the bat there. I'm definitely liking that. Let's see if anything else is just gonna is gonna catch our attention here on this first roll. I don't really think that's fair, but how is that not fair? I literally yeah, just opened my first roll and it was in there. Yeah, that's what they all say. Hold Who on. says that? <laughs> All right, keep your eye out for 2009s. Remember, those are worth five points a piece. Don't see them a whole lot. All right, guys, so with that 1940, I go up to four points, and Debo stays at zero. Nothing on her first roll. All right, so how are things looking over there? I got, like, stuff that looks old, but no luck. Well, I haven't seen anything in roll number two. Roll number one was pretty good, though. Wow, you're really opening them well this today, though. It's because like, last time my nails were looking rough. Yeah. My nails are still looking rough because I got them done for the wedding, mm. so they need to be taken off. But... Oh, no, you're good. You're good. I think they still look good. All right, what do we got going on over here? Some darkness. Looks like maybe that one was in the ground, possibly. I have some darkness on, my, on this one. Is it uh, anything? What? No, no, no. I mean, like. Oh, it's, like just, it's it oh, just what's looks this like. One? Wait, babe. Stop it. Do you see this? Stop. Stop. Oh my gosh, guys! How did I miss it? Oh, that is a really good sign though, babe. You could have one in your rolls too. Guys, we got a buffalo nickel. It's been a long time. I have to say, it has been a long time, and that is definitely gonna be put, be putting me ahead in the score sheet here. So. Debo does have a really cool find over there as well. You said 1952, right? Yeah. Okay, so that is a great find as well, especially considering that it could have an S-Mint mark and then that would make it a low mintage. But look at this. We just got ourselves a buffalo nickel. Look, it's like spotted. It's almost like a diseased buffalo. Oh, I don't like or, that. Or shot or something. It's kind of crazy. So I don't see any mint mark on this one. This is the reverse. If there was a mint mark, you'd see it down there below underneath five cents in between the E and C. So this is going to be a more common buffalo nickel. Of course, there's nothing common about finding buffalo nickels in circulation. So this is an awesome find already. Let's go ahead and flip it over and see what we got for our year. Three, two, one. Ooh, that is not going to be visible, guys. It looks like we have a dateless buffalo. Like I did mention before, though, there is no mint mark on it, so it's just going to be something of a common buffalo nickel. So I don't know if that's really worth nicodating. I think we might want to do it just because, so I can get it into the collection, um, if it ends up being a year that I need, because these do not come out very often. But I think for now, we're just going to put that one to the side and continue on. And just real quick here, guys, the buffalo nickel on the score sheet is going to be worth, it's actually being covered right there, 15 points for a buffalo nickel. So we'll add that to my score. That brings me up to 19. And with that being said, Debo, let's take a look and see what you got over there. Um, it's nothing special. It's just a regular 1952. Oh, you already checked the mint mark and everything? Yeah. 
Oh, I was going to do like a dramatic review. Oh, sorry. No, that's, that's, that's cool. I mean, if it's not your style, it's not your style. No, right? I just, nothing can compare to what you would got. You said 15? That's not true. That's not true. You said 15 points? Yep, 15 extra. And then what's, 1952, is that like two points? Yeah, just, just two for the 52. I do have another older looking coin right here. This is shaping up to be a really good box so far. We got a Denver reverse here. So let's see if that's going to be pre-64. Three, two, one. Ooh, 41. Nice. 41 Denver. Man, I am really pulling ahead here. I'm, I'm so sorry, babe. I usually like to keep it close if possible, but this one could be a really good box. I mean, you might have some great stuff over there, like a V-nickel, a shield nickel, something crazy. I don't know. It's fine. I, I don't want you to get discouraged. We got a 41 Denver here. That's going to be four more points. Brings us up to... 23 i believe so yeah 19 plus 4 is 23. all right well we do have points on the board for debo i have 23 points debo's at two and i lost my buffalo nickel where'd it go oh here it is okay it was hiding behind the tripod false alarm guys we figured it out i got nothing to roll number four deborah's actually ahead of me right now so i gotta catch up here so are you ready to eat no tie you don't have a no tie here oh uh, yeah you're right oh we got a 1958 look at that it's gonna be another two points for us Potentially 10, actually. If we get a 1958 no mint mark, that's a low mintage coin. So looking for no mint mark on the back side of this coin. Let's see if we can get it. Three, two, one. Ah, uh, no, we got the Denver on that one. So it's a two point coin. Brings me up to 25 on five rolls. Not a bad start. It's a numbers game. Just keep, keep her going. You'll get there. You're only what saying that? that because you're winning. Yeah, my last few rolls have been pretty... Oh, I got one. Oh, you got some? 1941. Oh, sweet. Flip it over, see what we got for a mint mark there. Hold on. <laughs> I don't see anything. Nothing? No. All right, so 41 plain. All the 41s are more common, so even an S wouldn't have been uh, like a low mintage, but that brings you up to six points. Six to 25 is the current score. Debo's getting on the board a little more often here. I think that uh, maybe this is a turning point because I haven't had anything in the last couple of rolls, so we'll see how it goes. All right, let's see if we got a 64 or something better here. Yeah, that totally could be a 64. It's got a Denver mint mark, so it's at least as old as 64. Let's hope for something a little older here, guys. Three, two, one. 57, I'll take oh, it. whatever. Extra two points right there. So like, what's your least favorite type of food? Uh, why? I just wanna, I was just curious. Why? Just making conversation. Right, 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 right. That, that makes sense, but uh -huh. like. And you know what, it doesn't even really matter because I think for the most part we agree on foods. I'm less picky, so. Anything that she likes, I'll probably be okay with. Although that's not a great combination if I end up being the winner and then I pick something she's not into. You know what I mean? So that's another problem is like I have to be in the mood for cer certain foods. Like there's uh -huh. certain foods that I just like. You know, I like the food, but I'm just not in the mood for it. So like I can't eat it. Well, unfortunately, whoever wins. Like you said earlier, what, what was the thing you said? Something about no exceptions? I never said that. Actually, <laughs> no, I did say that, but Ryan told me to say that. Or sorry, Quinn told me to say that. So I, I didn't tell you to something, say it. It is. Okay, <laughs> rewind. Let's go back and let's see. He was like, okay, you should say no exceptions or something like that. Or something like that. Well, what if you say no <laughs> exceptions or something like that? Like, what else is something like that? Tell me. Enlighten me. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see where this goes. I can't. I can't deal with this, man. All right. Let's see what the next roll has in store. What was your favorite part of our wedding? Uh, I just like the fact that everybody was there. Everybody was able to get together, have a good time. And all the people that were at our wedding were there because they really wanted to be. They were our closest friends and family. And uh, a lot of people played a part. It was awesome. So yeah. hopefully I'll be throwing some pictures up here so you guys can see it. How about you? Yeah, no, my goal, like, my goal was to always have like a party, not just like a wedding, but like yeah. a big party, like a celebration. And honestly, like everybody was on the dance floor. Everybody was having a good time. The food was good. Drinks, music, everything was all good. My brother was the DJ for us, which was great. Made things so much fun. And he had a good energy, which made yeah for sure everything else good. So did you find something? 
I think I might have, yeah. It definitely looks older. What do you think? Maybe. It looks pretty old. Yeah. Let's see what we got, guys. Three, two, one. Oh, 39. Okay. That is sick. All right, let's see if that's going to be a double die 39 plane. No, it doesn't look like it. I'll go ahead and throw up a picture of what that would look like. I have found one of those before. It was one of the coolest things I've ever found. We'll probably get that graded someday. This one is not one, though. Um, they're tough to find. So 1939 is actually going to be worth five points instead of four. So that is going to bring me up to 33. This is ending up looking like a very lopsided hunt. Something's just not right. I don't know. I don't no. know what it is. You think the rolls were stacked against you, possibly? Yeah. I think when he, like, at the beginning when we were grabbing uh -huh. the rolls and he, uh -huh. you just, like, went in and grabbed a whole uh -huh. bunch. Yeah. I feel like you just, like, were mind reading the rolls. Mind reading the rolls, I'm then? just saying. I'm just saying. Something was, like... Not fair. Something's going on. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of copper in nickels. Did you know that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I watch your videos. Yeah, so there's... No, there's a lot of copper in nickels. There's 75% copper and 25% nickel. All right, back to nickel roll hunting. How are we doing over there? Not good. I feel like you haven't had a find in a while. No. I'm sorry. What? I said I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? Like what? You know what? Like what? <laughs> Stop. Oh! What you got? It's just a 1951, but... 51? Yeah. That's not a bad year. Do you see this? Look, we got Key Date 51S and Low Mintage 51D. So if you get any mint mark, you're going to get a, a high point coin there. All together now. <laughs> Three, two, one. Let's see what we got. Nothing. Nothing? Oh, that's too bad. Boo. So it's a two-point coin. Brings you up to eight. All right, let's see if we can manifest a low mintage. I feel like I haven't seen a low mintage nickel in a while. Debo had a really good shot at one just now with that 1951. So we got a couple that have some nice color to it. Let's see. That one's not it. How about this? This looks pretty sick. Nope. Just a darker colored. Probably spent some time in the ground. All right, guys, I feel kind of like the vibes are down. Maybe it's because the competition's rigged. I don't know, but we're going to go ahead and take a mail break. I actually have some really awesome packages. You yes. just admitted the competition was rigged. Oh, no, I didn't say that. We do have some packages, though, that we're going to open, and uh, I know that Devo's been looking forward to this, so let's go ahead and jump right into them. Let's do it. So this first one is from Aaron. Also, guys, you're going to notice some of these packages are kind of old. Most of them are from, like, around March. So I apologize for taking a while to get to the packages, but uh, we are opening them now. I'm very excited to see what's inside here, as is Devo. I think she's um, probably more excited even than I am. She loves opening stuff no matter what it is. So let's it's get like into it. It's like Christmas every time. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's get into it and see what we got. All right, here we Bubble go. Wrap. So this is coming from Aaron. I see some loose coins right off the bat. Looks like we got some uh, coin roll hunting coins here, probably from their own personal hunts. Very cool. Oh, we got some very interesting coins right there. All right, let's take a look at these under the stand. All right, so here's the contents of that package. We have a bag of coins, a few pieces of leather. It looks like Aaron does leather work. Some stuff that looks like it came out of the rolls. We got a nice looking wheat scent right there, 1957 Denver. Whole bunch of 2009, some Canadians as well. Even a 1950 Canadian right there, King George the sixth, and then another box over here. But first we'll start with the note. So it says, hello Quinn, my name is Aaron Ionta. Ionta is pronounced Ionta. I think I got that right, 63 years old. I started collecting coins when I was about 10. I stopped for about 38 years. I've been collecting now for about 10 years. These are some 2009s I've collected for you out of three boxes. The coins in the funny box, one of them has a circular mark above the date. A friend gave me two baggies of Canadian coins. They are wrapped separately. Have fun, P.S. It is okay to show this to the viewers, just do not show my address. Well, you got it, Aaron. P.S. P.S. I like to work leather. Here's a wallet I made. That is really cool. I, I like this a lot. This is awesome. And uh, I actually did a lot of this type of stuff when I was at Boy Scouts as well, so that definitely brings me back. All right, opening on up the bag here. Let's see what we got inside. Ooh, these are very cool. Look at this. We got some older Canadian coins here. There's a King George VI, 1952 right there. This looks to be a silver dime, 1943. A 1944 V-Nickel. These are the Canadian versions of the V-Nickels. I think they were in 44, 45. And then a Canadian Quarter. Silver 1943 Canadian Quarter as well. So all pretty much around the World War II age here for the dime, nickel, and quarter. And then a 1952 
King George the Sixth Penny. Very cool. And last but not least, we have the box on the inside here. Let's see what we got. Oh, another nice leather wallet. And it feels like this one actually has stuff inside of it. So let's take a look at that. Yes, it does. So it looks like more of the same of the stuff that was loose in the package. I think actually maybe all of this was in the wallet, but it just kind of spilled out while it was in the mail. But nonetheless, this is an extremely cool thing right here. A nice little uh, coin wallet. And uh, that's actually the second one that came in the package. So thank you so much, Aaron. We really appreciate that. You're so pretty. I know, right? You want to take one with you sure. to work? I don't, I don't know where I was going. <laughs> Why with did that. you say so aggressively? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, which one do you like? The pink or the green? Well, I think you should have the pink one. I feel like these colors are giving sophisticated Barney. And that's actually Deborah's aesthetic is sophisticated it's Barney. Really nice. She loves to see look, she's even got the purple of the, that she's already got one of them going. This would match your shirt and give you that Barney vibe. Oh my god. I'm taking this one just because you said the other. Okay, one. that makes sense. That's fair enough. I feel like you did it on purpose. <laughs> no, no, no. You no. wanted me to pick this. He's playing with my emotions. No, no, I just right I, now. I just thought of that actually. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Alright, so we got one more package here. This one comes from Gary. I actually have quite a few packages from Gary, maybe we'll open more of those in the future. And uh, this one was sent over a year ago, so I definitely need to get back into this one. You can see it was back when we were in uh, Michigan. Now we're not, we haven't been in Michigan since October, so it gives you an idea of uh, what we're talking about here. So let me pass this off to Devo. She's gonna go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. Okay, so we finally, finally got it open. Good amount of stuff in here. There's yeah, lots of stuff in here. Already, I can tell this is going to be an awesome package. Let's go ahead and lay it all out and see what we got. All right, so first up, we got a bag. It's like a knapsack with a little bit of melted rubber band on it. Unsearched Lucky 7-Pound Wheat Bag, Viva Las Vegas Horde. Wow, I've never heard of that before, but it sounds cool. And then we have a card. It says Lego Gary 1954 at yahoo.com, Dawn of the Collectors. That's cool. And I think we have a note here, so let's go ahead and read that so we can get an idea of what we're getting into. All right, here's our note. It says, Ryan, I recently moved on from coin collecting except Lincoln Indian Head and Flying Eagle Sense. These coins I'm giving you are from a vast collection I bought a couple of years ago that I couldn't sell at my showcase in Allen, Michigan at the Allen Antique Barn. The long drive from Dearborn to Allen was becoming a real pain and I closed my showcase. I hope you can use these coins and sell them using the money for your college expenses, etc. On occasion, when I do come across some pennies and silver coins, your placements are extremely helpful. In observance of Star Wars Day, Star Wars Day, May the 4th be with you. So yes, this was sent back in May of 2023. We almost made it for May of 2024, but again, I, I apologize, Gary. This is incredible. Look at all this stuff. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so we get just coins on top of coins here. This says 1957 Russia launches Sputnik mission. So that must have been the year that when uh, Russia launched into space. It's got just all these different coins from different time periods and all these little just kind of like, look at here. It says 2000 millennium celebrations take place throughout the world. 2003 former Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein captured, stuff like that. I mean, just coins on top of coins here, guys. This is unbelievable. Then we got all kinds of foreign coins, like here's a 1943. Now this one is really cool. Look at that, 1906 Canadian dime. This is the type of stuff I used to love when I was a kid. Then we got a few rolls here, an entire 50 cent roll of Canadian centennial pennies, that 1867, 1967 double date. So that's a 1967 penny. I love finding these, I call them bird cents. You can see we got the bird on the back right there. That's super cool. And looks like we got four more rolls of those 1867, 1967 centennials. So that is crazy. That is so cool. Thank you for that. And on top of that is just so much more. I can't even express to you how many coins I'm looking at here. Thank you so much, Gary, for sending that. And he sent two other massive packages that we will have to get to at some point, but not today. We'll save those for another time. All right, so how are we feeling after opening some awesome packages? That was pretty cool. I am ready. I All am right. ready to roll. Let's do it, guys. <laughs> score is 33 to 8. Debo's definitely got some ground to make up here, so... And just as we were saying that Debo storage actually filled up, not something we're looking to deal with right now. So we're gonna cut it down to one camera for now. Uh, I will just pass it over to you if you find anything and uh, we'll see how that goes. So I don't think I have anything in my roll here. So I'm just gonna pass it off to you right now. So we haven't gone on our honeymoon yet. We have not. If you were to pick up a, pick a place, mm -hmm. Where would you want to go? No tie. 
That's... Somewhere that has a no tie. So, Michigan. <laughs> Is that where they're at? Yeah. No oh, tie was made was in Michigan. Hey, if you're outside of Michigan and you've ever been to no tie, let us know. No, I, I, I think that we were kind of talking about like going to the coast, possibly. Yeah. Something like that might be kind of cool. Yeah. It's just, it's hot right now. It is very hot. It's only going to get hotter. And I start school in August. Yeah. Which, whoa, going to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, July has just begun. It's probably one of the hottest months of the year, especially down here in uh, North Carolina, which we're just adjusting to the heat. The week of our wedding, it was like in the 90s. Like, I was in a really long dress. My yeah. veil is 100% polyester. It was hot. I was sweating so so, so, so much. And then Ryan's mom and uh, sister, so like my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law, stayed over for a, a little bit too. And it was hot. Like, it was very, very hot. Yeah. Just weather that we for sure have to get used to. But I still had a good time. What do we got? 1957. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it brings you into the double digits. It's our first find <laughs> since uh, opening mail. And the current score is 33 for Ryan and 10 for Debo. I thought it was 1937, but it's 1987. Well, you know what a 1937 would be, right? War nickel. What war would that be, babe? Uh, what war was America involved in in 1937? American War. The American War. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> no, I was trying to say it would be a buffalo nickel if it was I know. Okay. All right, folks, we got a 1957. Not the biggest deal. It actually matches the one that Debo found just now. 1957, Denver it is. Two more points brings me up to 35. <laughs> you open it backwards and then flipped it. <laughs> well, because I'm used to the other way, but you're telling me to do it a certain way. So now I have well, to... Well, it's because you, you get your hand on I got it. it. All right. <laughs> A lot of thought went into that. <laughs> and then that was the result. You broke my brain. <laughs> Can you explain the, to the audience what your thought process was just now? I'm used to opening things a certain way. Okay. And then Ryan is like, well, I should open it this way because then my hand won't be in the way and the lighting and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I'm so used to opening things a certain way. Right. So I still opened it the wrong way, but I had to figure out how to make it in the correct lighting that it was just... <laughs> Correct lighting or completely unobstructed because your your hand would be in the way otherwise. All right, guys, down to the last three rolls each. We really haven't gotten much in this second half. Devil's yeah. up to 10. I'm at 33. I feel like I've been stuck there for a while, though. I feel like at this point, like, you should already just pick where we're going to go eat. <laughs> just somewhere right. not expensive. Okay, I hear that. All right, I got something, guys. It looks to be a 1953. Let's take a peek. Yep, 1953 it is, and the mint mark is going to be a Denver, so just a common 50s coin there. Going to be worth two extra points, brings me up to 37. All right, guys, we're down to the last roll each. Let's see what's going to come out here. This is Debo's last chance. She needs to make up at least 27 points here. Oh, so. great. <laughs> yeah, let's see. A v nickel would be worth 50. That, that could put you there. But uh, those don't come out too often, I, I am afraid to say. I am always amazed at the point distribution on these competition hunts. I mean, sometimes, it feels like a lot of times it's extremely lopsided. Like last time, Debo kicked my butt. This time, I'm kicking Debo's butt. So it's like there's no in between. All right, how's it looking? Um, I have nothing. Nothing at all. Mm -mm. Yeah, so it's looking like it's going to be inconsequential whether or not I nick a date that buffalo nickel to find the date. Of course, we know it's not going to be a low mintage anyway, so I think I'll probably save that for a short. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys think that I should put nick a date on that buffalo nickel to find out what the year is because I do have a buffalo nickel collection that I'm trying to fill up. And if this ended up going into it, I certainly would like to know. So I'd like to see the date on that if we can, uh, just to know if it's gonna be going into the collection or not. But definitely no mint mark there. You can see there's nothing in that spot. Very worn down, beat up coin. And I don't think that we're gonna be able to differentiate anything on that little mound of metal right there where the date should be. 
without putting some acid on it and figuring it out that way. So let me know down in the comments below what you think we should do. If we should acid this coin or leave it as is and just uh, have it as a nice little piece of American history. And our final score came out to be Debo with 10, Ryan with 37. Unbelievably lopsided. So sorry about that. I am going to be picking the restaurant and it's going to be Jamaican. I don't know if there's a Jamaican place in this town, but we're gonna find it, we're gonna go to it, mm. and we're gonna get it. Wait, now I'm curious, why Jamaican? I don't know, it's the first thing that popped into my head. We haven't okay. had Jamaican in a long time. I love Jamaican food. And it's because Jamaican me crazy. Well, that's our show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new because I will post new videos like this every single week, always bringing you along with the hunt and having a good time. And as always, I'm Quinn. <laughs> and I'm Devo. And this is Quinn's Coin signing out. We'll see you in, in the, the next, next one. one.